Hi everyone, it's Diane Evans with stampingwithdiane.com. Let me just jump up here. Um, welcome um, to my um, stamping studio. Um, I'm an interior, I, <laughs> I'm a Canadian um, Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the interior of British Columbia. So welcome. I'm so glad that you've joined me. Oh my goodness, like I, I mix things up and sometimes I wonder about myself when I do things like that. But in any event, welcome. Welcome to How Did They Do That? Technique Tuesday. Um, I'm, I'm, I like this technique. I've used this technique a lot. It happens to be an embossing folder technique and I have lots of techniques with the embossing folders, but I'm gonna show you one today. So we're gonna head on down to um, my desktop. So this is, we're gonna call it embossing folder number one technique. Um, this is one that um, adds an awful lot of shading, adds a lot of dimension to your card. Um, and I, I just think it's one that you really need to kind of look at and, and like and, and actually use it and use it in a lot of different ways. I'm using it in a very, very, um, an easy way of using it uh, today. However, um, you can really step this up by doing this particular one. So what we're going to need today is I'm using the Boughs of Holly. I love this. This is part of our stamp camp at the end of the month that involves our international stamp camp. So you purchase the suite, you get 13 make and takes for free. My goodness, what what better um, options can you have there? So on this, this technique, it says, um, there's easy ways to change the look of an embossing folder. And I'm gonna actually show you today the difference. Hello. Um, I'm going to show you the difference of it being done and it not being done. And then you can kind of take your pick um, from there. What you want to do is you wanna pick up an embossing um, folder that you want to see the dimension. Now I've used this one and I'm using it again today, um, brick and mortar. And the reason I'm using this particular embossing folder is because you can see such a dramatic change with it. So um, I, that's what I really like about this embossing folder. So we're gonna use that. Like I said, we're using Boughs of Holly. And the other thing, you can do this two ways. You can do this with an ink spot or you could do it with a hard brayer. So when I need a hard brayer, I mean a hard rubber brayer. Um, but I find that this other way is quite easy. Sometimes these brayers are hard to find. We used to sell them years ago, but we don't anymore. So that's unfortunate. So what you can get these um, uninked stamp and spots. Now you can use an ink pad with this, but I find that this works the best. For me, it works the best. So what you would just do when it's uninked, which is like this, you're just going to take your... Um, your ink spot or your re-inker. And all you do is you just put this on like this and then basically take it and store it upside down so that the ink is all going to be up at the top. Now, what I always do with these ink spots, because I like them for one, you can take them off to um, um, stamp camps. You can take them off to um, retreats that you go to. I put a circle of the color that this is. So this one happens to be Smoky Slate. Now I'm using this, I'm using Sahara Sand, but I like this color with the Sahara Sand. I could have used Sahara Sand, but I kind of wanted it just a little bit darker and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I'm just gonna put this off to the side here because I've gone ahead and cut out most of it anyways. All right, so. You're, you're, like I said, you're going to pick an embossing folder um, that you want to see the dimension added to the look. Now, the other part about this, this technique um, will be available for printout uh, tomorrow at 9.05 on my Facebook page. So if you are not a member of my, not my Facebook page, my Facebook group, if you're not a member of my Facebook group, just go down below here. There is a link to my Facebook group and you can um, download this tomorrow. What I do with this is I will link it to my video that I've done, that I'm doing here right now. Plus also you can put your sample of this and then I will put a picture of, uh, Pam's asking, have Zoom of those but never used. Oh, you have a bunch of them. 
And I think I will follow your lead on this. But that's great because you know what? The ink, ink spots are really good. Um, like I say, you can take them anywhere. So anyways, getting back to this um, form, I'm going to put my sample of this particular card on here, and then I'll put the measurements of this card. Not that it's going to be difficult, um, but also I'm going to I'll write down the different sort of things that I have used. Um, in this particular one, it'll be the Bows of Holly, the brick and mortar embossing folder, and probably I'll write down the, the blank spots on there as well. All right, so let's just put that off to the side. So, important part is on your embossing folder, there's a raised side and there's an indented side. On this particular folder, it's really kind of hard to figure that out. Um, so, what you can do is you look at the side that has the Stampin' Up! logo on it. And then I just take my ink spot and then I just lightly rub this across here. Um, just like that. You know, when you don't sell a certain thing anymore, you tend to go to other things. All right, so I'm just going to bring in some of this stuff that I have here. Um, my card kit. So I have a piece. Uh, this is Sahara Sand. This particular designer series paper goes so well with this color. And I know it's a color that's not used very often. I've always liked it. I love Sahara Sand also with Blushing Bride. It looks amazing. Right, so I'm just going to line that up right like that. And then I'm going to bring in my big cut and emboss machine. And I won't be struggling with this because it's my big one and I use it for everything. And I'm just going to bring this in. And I know it's pretty close to this particular um, camera. But I'm just going to use my number one plate. I'm going to use my embossing folder. Remember when you're using these big embossing folders, always put the folded edge through first. And make sure that you've got this in the center. Because it can actually eat. This machine, if you do any kind of forcing, can actually eat your embossing folder. Um, I would say, ask me how I know, um, but that's pretty obvious that I, I do know. And then, of course, all we did was just put this number four plate on there, and it goes through. It's funny how I had so much trouble the other day when I was doing this. And then take a look at this. Does that not look amazing? I think it just it just sort of pops it out. It gives a bit of a different look to your embossing folder. And what a great way to add dimension to your um, your um, the card. It's a background. <laughs> My goodness, I just went nuts. Yeah, it, it's amazing. And I find like if I use the brayer, which it works great because I, I, I went, how am I going to do this without the brayer? Because it's so frustrating when you can't get that brayer, but it, it just tends to ink it up a little bit more. I have a piece of evening evergreen and this happens to be four and a quarter by 11 and I've scored it at five and a half. That's scored into the mountain. You know, I don't know if I cut that correctly or not. I'm just going to come in and let's score that. Hello. All right. So then we're going to put that on there. Now I've gone ahead and I've cut out a bunch of these different um, things from the particular, the Bows of Holly, that I figured we're going to go with it. I don't know. I haven't put the card together. But I've cut my base leaves with the um, Sahara Sand. I've got this part here and we have that with Sahara Sand and then I use the Evening Evergreen and we're just going to go ahead and we're going to color that. We're going to put that glue that onto our our leaves. Now I'm going to put this on here. Now I could have used those adhesive sheets. I just find that a lot of times I keep forgetting about them. So I'm going to let that just set or sit 
and it's going to set a bit so that when I put it together, we're not going to have the glue oozing out. So this happens to be the second leaf, second size leaf. I'm going to let that set as well. Now on this particular part, I'm going to also go ahead and I'm going to let that set on there as well. But I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to emboss this. Of course, I'm going to emboss, right? Now, I could go ahead and just stamp this with Evening Evergreen, which is what I'm going to stamp it in. But I'm going to do embossing because I want to use the clear embossing powder because Sometimes, unless I put this in my Stamparatus, I don't get a really dark image. And by doing it with the, let's just put this here. Now, I should be letting this set as well. All right, so I'm just going to come in with my embossing kit. And I'm going to use my, my embossing buddy. I'm sure glad they brought these back because you know what? I felt bad about using my embossing buddy all the time. I knew when they retired, I bought a few because I love them so much. All right, so let's go back. And I'm thinking to myself, I now I'm thinking this is more of a masculine Christmas card. So um, I'm going to actually go season's greet. Wow, Christmas wishes. You know, I'm going to do season's greetings on this particular one. I usually use the Christmas wishes, but I'm going to use the season's greetings on this particular one. And I'm just going to, you know, I'm hoping those aren't getting too dry. So I think we should be okay with this. I'm coming in with my paper piercing mat maybe I should do some paper piercing right because we haven't done that I haven't done that in ages a great technique maybe that's something I should do next week anyways I'm just going to come in with my season's greetings if I get this good and dark maybe I don't have to emboss but I just find with the photopolymer stamp sets you don't get them as much now see it's not bad but i'm going to come in with my clear embossing powder and of course i always use um i don't use the tray but i definitely use this and i use just a piece of cardstock now the reason i do that is because i always found that if you didn't use the cardstock you, and you had a spoon in there, there's so much static electricity and you end up with embossing powder all over the place. So now we'll just put that back on there. Bring out my tweezer and let's just put that away. Now I'm thinking that these are really drying. So let's, before I go ahead and emboss that, let's go ahead and put these onto here. So I'm just going to put this on here. Oops. It will stick very quickly. So you want to get that so it's lined up. There's that one. And let's put this one on there. And I find if you go and to line these up, I always line up. I hold the, um, the stem there. Put that on and then squeeze it so that it's right even with the leaf itself. And then I did this in Cherry Cobbler. And I just put, I did color on color. I think that'll be enough. Okay, so let's go back to this part here. All right, so I'm gonna come in and let's just bring in our heat tool. I love the two speeds of the heat tool. Oh, thank you, Becky, I really do appreciate that. The one of the nicest things that you can do for me, the best compliment you can give me is to share my video. So who's taking advantage of the free shipping today? Oh my goodness, free shipping. 
can't beat it. And that works out to 11%, you know, on all orders over 10, um, over $100 in Canada anyways. But 11% on shipping is huge, especially in this day and age. So see how much that, that makes it, um, it just pops off better that way. All right, so then I'm just going to come and put the glue and we're going to let that set as well. And just put it on there. Okay, we're just going to let that set for a second. All right, so on the inside of the card, I was thinking that what we could do is we could go ahead and we could put um, some of the leaves on there. So I'm going to come in. I think I'm just going to do an outside leaf is what I'm going to do. And I think I'll just do the smaller one. And I'm going to have to use that paper piercing tool again. But I just want to get this on here. And then I can show you how that works. Now, the pieces that go behind this look like this. They look a little strange, right? But they line up just like that. See, I didn't let that set enough. But again, what we can do with that is just take our sponge and just take that glue off. Great. So I want to show you this now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this onto the back here. I'm just going to put this on here. And it's just kind of a plain sort of type card. We're going to put the berries on right about here. But see how that's coming together like that. Now what I want to do is I want to show you this card without that embossed background. You see what I'm saying? Doesn't that look so much better with this, this background? Right? So let's go ahead and put this on. So this is episode number 20. Can you believe this? So like I say, this is one um, of the embossing folder techniques. There's so many different techniques that you can actually do with embossing folders. So I'll kind of spread them out a little bit. And then we can go ahead and let's put these on there. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to use my... Dimensionals. Probably should have used a dark one there. Yes, the brick brown definitely, definitely looks better. I mean, there's sometimes that you want that nice clean look, but this definitely gives you a different look. Let's put that there. A little bit of overkill, but we're okay. And then I want to put these leaves on there. So let's see how we want to put these leaves. I'm going to put those behind. This is going to go, I want to bring this over here a little bit. Just like that. All right. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a leaf, I mean, a dimensional up at the top here. And I'm going to put a dimensional up at the top here. And then I'm going to come in with the glue. We're going to put that on there again. So I want to make sure that I know where I'm putting this. So go back. Yeah, okay. So that's just going to go like that. I forgot to take this dimensional off. And that's going to kind of pop that part off up at the top. It gives a little bit more dimension on there, right? take this one off this time and then we can go ahead and put that there and then when this goes on we can go on like so and it's going to go on there 
with that down. Now, the other thing that I thought I could do with that, and I'm just going to leave that off. We have these essential Baker's Twine Essential Pack. And I thought this color here, even though it is crumb cake, I thought that it would look kind of cool behind here. So let's just give it a try. Maybe it won't work. We'll just see how it's going to work. Okay. Okay, a lot of people, and I, well, I know this, is people go in, and I wanted this to be a masculine card, so I didn't really want it to be, to have a bow on it, but check this out. I'm just going to tie a bow, but we're not going to put the bow on the front. I'm going to bring this down like so. I'm going to cut that and then what this can do is it's just going to go up. Let's see how this is going to look. Maybe I didn't do it long enough. I didn't. Oh, well, we'll, we'll just loop it then. All right, so I'm just going to come in with my seal. And this is before I take the dimensionals off. And then let's just loop this. I say this would work great for a masculine card. It's not too pretty. I mean, it depends. Like, I just thought this was really cool colors to work with this. So we're just going to put that down there. And I'll cut this. I'll do this other piece down there. I didn't mean to cut it. Oops, there we go. So yeah, free shipping day. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we just want that kind of behind there. It's not going to come off there. So we're just going to bring this out a bit here. There we go. This can go up here. So this is just going to go on here like so. And then I'm going to put these berries on here, just like that, just to give a tiny bit of a pop-up color. Just watching. Um... Oh, Pam says she was racking her brain for a masculine card. Good. I'm glad that helps. Because sometimes, you know, like I say, it's hard to come up with a masculine card. And we're going to put some embellishments on there. So like I say, I have the Sahara Sand for the inside. And I know a lot of people don't like this color, but honestly, it is a great neutral color. And like I say, for the inside, I'm just going to use the leaf that is um, the detailed leaf. And then I'm just going to come in here and just stamp that. There we go. And then we can put that on the inside. Yeah, also just just um, a mention about the free shipping is make sure that you get it in time because honestly, if you get it in, like I know in BC here, if you get it in at 11 o'clock our time, it's after the sale time. All right, so let's go ahead and let's put some embellishments on there. I think these rustic um, dots would work best. Um. I tried the brushed ones and I don't like how they would look. I think they're too shiny. These ones wouldn't be too bad. Let me just go in and just check that. I honestly think these ones would be the best. But let's take a look. Oh, that doesn't look too bad. 
Let's try that. Let's try these. Hmm. You know what? I was wrong until I put that on there. I'm going to use these. All right, let's put that there. Put a little one here. And I think we'll put another bigger one right about there. Always the question where to put it, right? So, masculine card using <laughs> the embossing number one, folder number one technique. I know that sounds like a silly name to call it. I could call it the background embossing folder background technique just it wouldn't fit up there I'll, I'll try to figure a different name that i'll put for that but i want to show you another card oh my goodness i had done this quite a few months ago actually it was for a mystery challenge that i had done it and this had used the same embossing folder but see how subtle that is because i used the stamp and spot and this i had used smoky slate but smoky slate and did it into like um yeah, anyways, there's that one there. This one was done with a brayer. This was done with the spot. And that's what I say. You have a little bit more control by doing it with the stamp and spot. So, you know, it just depends on how you like to have it and what the look that you have. So check back tomorrow at 9.05. I will have this in on my Facebook group. Oh, thank you. Actually, those are Scotty's. Anyways, um... So this, you can check this out. It's Scotty's, it's an easel, a split easel card. And that is also on my YouTube channel. Um, this, you can put your sample on there. This picture will be here. I will put the notes of the different product that I used on there. Episode number 20. It'll be on in my Stampin' with Diane Stampers group. The link is down below for that. Um, yeah. So in any event, I hope you enjoyed that. So make sure that you come back tomorrow. Tomorrow um, is um, tomorrow is mystery. Um, it's mystery stamping tomorrow. So I'll give you three clues. The clues will be posted at noon and I will be going at three o'clock uh, p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Oh my goodness, we're still on Pacific Daylight um, Time. So I hope that you enjoyed that. Remember, give me the thumbs up, share my video. I really do appreciate that when you do do that. And um, we will talk to you soon. Bye for now.